Three weeks after Joe Biden officially launched his re-election bid, the president's 2024 campaign strategy is beginning to take shape in a new memo obtained by NBC News. Biden campaign manager Julie Chavez Rodriguez lays out three points of focus for the 2024 team. The first, protecting and expanding the, quote, blue wall, in addition to holding on to narrowly won states like Georgia and Arizona. Chavez Rodriguez says the campaign will invest in Republican-leaning states like Florida and North Carolina. Second, to build on the Biden-Harris coalition of black and Latino voters, Chavez Rodriguez notes there is room for growth with suburban, rural, and white working class voters as well. And finally, she writes the campaign will make an effort to, quote, break through a fragmented media environment and connect to voters where they are. Let's talk about that with Democratic Congresswoman Veronica Escobar of Texas. She's a national co-chair for President Biden's 2024 campaign. Thanks for being on this morning. It's always great to see you. Um, that is one of the biggest challenges, breaking through the fragmented media environment and, and connecting with voters where they are. Explain, can you, can you define what that environment is? And then what's the strategy to break through? Good morning, Mika. It's wonderful uh, to see you this morning, and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk about the important work ahead that we have in Congress and that we have in making sure that we reelect our president. Um, and, and as you mentioned, one of our challenges is that fragmented media market. We are going to lean in and depend on our grassroots operations. It's really important that we meet with our voters where they are. Um, that we engage uh, at the ground level and that we have the conversations and make the investments necessary to ensure that we get folks to the polls and that we secure those 270 uh, electoral votes on election night. Congresswoman Escobar, good morning. I wanted to touch base with you on one of the uh, details, one of the plans there laid out in that memo, and that is trying to boost support among Latino voters and black voters. A lot of Democrats have been concerned by what they saw, that Donald Trump made some gains in those groups back in 2020, uh, and that they feel like there's been, as it was put to me by one strategist, some votes left on the playing field, if you will, that there's simply more people to get out to the polls to vote for the Democrats. So how? That's a big task. And these are not monolithic groups. So what's the approach? How the, what's the strategy? to be. Right. Absolutely. These are not monolithic voting blocks. Um, you know, I can tell you as a Texas Latina, um, you know, the, the what will resonate with Texas uh, Latino voters may not be the same thing that resonates uh, you know, with Arizona Latino voters and so on. So we have uh, we're, we're going to have a very diverse group of surrogates, of allies talking directly to our communities. You know, the, the while we did leave some votes on the table in 2020, that means there's an opportunity to pick them up and make sure that they are with us, that they understand the investments that the president and this administration has made in their communities. These transformative uh, pieces of legislation in infrastructure and in addressing climate in building jobs, making sure that that folks know and understand the alternative. I mean, look at what's happening with Republicans today. Uh, you all were just talking about the debt limit. There's a manufactured economic crisis that Republicans have brought to the table. And they're toying with our economy. They're jeopardizing our future, not just here in the United States, but the, the global economy. So, um, we, you know, we've got to talk to folks and make sure they understand that the stakes couldn't be higher.